I routinely ask, Diane, why did you decide to start Weather Integrations? And for me, it was just a natural pairing of my passion areas. I am an avid weather and water geek. I just love watching the weather, watching the clouds, but also match together my interest in helping people make smarter decisions. I really believe that if people have access to the information that they need to make those decisions, they can really make more informed decisions. So that's just a part of my core value is helping to filter through the noise of all the information that's available and drilling down to the questions of what does the weather actually mean to you as an individual or you as a company. Looking back, I'm so thankful. I was just blessed to have support as I grew up to really explore my interest in meteorology. Yes, I was one of those kids that I was always out watching the weather, watching the clouds, even when the tornado sirens were going off. And my parents were incredibly supportive in that interest. Some of my fondest memories growing up was when we go to visit the weather station when my dad was in the Air Force and working alert. I loved talking to the weather forecasters there, learning how they helped make pilots make smart decisions of when they could fly and where they could fly safely. They also were great resources for different ideas for my science fair projects because they always had to have a connection to meteorology. So when it came time for me to think about what I wanted to do in my life, it was a no-brainer question for me. I honestly have always wanted to be a meteorologist. I was so blessed in my career that I worked for the National Weather Service for the first 20 years and I was able to fill the role of both a weather forecaster as well as a hydrologist. And through those experiences, I worked literally the gamut from hurricanes to blizzards and got a chance to see how every weather event necessitated different types of response and preparation activities. In my last role in Minnesota, I was able to work closely with local, state, and federal partners, helping them plan and prepare for weather events with an emphasis in flooding. Unfortunately, we had six big events, flood events, while I was there. And I got a chance to see how each event necessitated different types of response activities and each community had to respond and plan and prepare differently. But I also got a chance to see if the community understood our confidence in the forecast, understood the forecast itself, they could take that information back to their city council and leaders, ask for emergency funding, and get that improved to make preparation um, activities and put those into motion. Some of these requests were not cheap. Communities had to spend upwards of a half a mil to three quarters of a million dollars to do things like building temporary levees. But because they were able to do those preparation activities, they saved millions of dollars in damages. So I really had a chance to see how if we can be proactive and if people understood the information, they could really help minimize the risk of what the weather is going to bring. And that really is a part of our core that we bring with weather integrations. Why did we decide to go into agriculture? That was really actually an easy question because in addition to having a huge fascination for weather and hydrology, I'm also a master gardener. I just love watching and my plants grow and trying to produce healthy vegetables, healthy plants, and I see every day how the weather impacts that and how the weather influences my pests and disease development. So that really was just kind of a natural offshoot for us to, to explore of going into agriculture. I realized though I have a lot to learn, so I've been attending conferences, workshops, talking to producers to learn how the weather impacts your specific and unique operations. And the more and more I talk to producers, the more I respect I have for you guys. You guys face the weather head on every day. And most of the time, yes, you're looking at those risk days. How do I minimize those risks? Because those honestly do impact your overall net profits. But we want to look at the flip side of that conversation. There are absolutely optimal days for you to do certain tasks around the farm. So how do we help you better anticipate those opportunity days and shift your plans for the week so that you can take advantage of those days as well. So fundamentally, we're asking those questions and we're implementing ideas and strategies through Growcaster to help you put the weather to work for you. Yeah.